Good afternoon, everyone out there. Good morning, good evening, wherever you're tuning in from. Welcome to another edition of Webinar Wednesday. It is awesome to be with you guys here today. We're going to begin in just a few moments. I see a lot of people still logging in. I want to say hi to a few familiar names and faces out there. Number one, Sheila, we see you there. Welcome to the webinar. Also, Terry, good to see you. Some new names here, Zach and Paul, nice to have you in the webinar. Jim, welcome. Brian B, one of the BD All-Stars here, great to see you. Dean and Felipe, good to see you again as well. We will begin in just a moment, so please grab a cup of coffee, a bag of popcorn. We have a great webinar today. We'll begin in just a few moments. All right, gang, let's dive right into it. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. It's great to be with everyone here today. We'll continue our tradition. I will unmute everybody's microphone right now. If you wanna mention your name and where you're tuning in from, uh, feel free. We'll do that for about 30 seconds and move on. So go ahead and unmute your microphone and, and share your name and where you're tuning in from. Tony from Titusville, Florida. All right, welcome, Tony. Michael, Oceanside, California. Sean from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Sean. All right, great work there, guys. All right, so hope you guys are doing well. If this is your first time joining Webinar Wednesday, welcome. I am Jason there on the left. And as always, we're lucky to be joined by David Rocklin, who is the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directories and a ton more. So David, welcome to the webinar. Hey everybody, so glad to be with you for another Webinar Wednesday. We've got a bunch of great updates to share with you today, along with a super presentation, a great tip of the week that I think will benefit everybody, whether you've had a, a website for a long time here or if you're just getting started. Absolutely. Yeah, today's tip of the week, Someone should be able, everyone should be able to take something uh, from it today. So super useful info coming your way. And we are streaming live on YouTube. So for those of you joining us on YouTube, hello, you can type in your comments. We are monitoring it and we can uh, answer your questions uh, throughout the webinar. If you're not subscribed to the Brilliant Directories YouTube channel, definitely invite you to join us there, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash YouTube. You just click on the subscribe button and it's a great way to get notified as soon as the webinar replays are available, uh, new feature tutorials, the tips of the week, and tons more. And one of the benefits of streaming on YouTube Live is the replay will be immediately available and we will post it shortly uh, after the webinar finishes into the Facebook group. You can join us there, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. I think we just passed 13,000 members in there. It's a fantastic, very positive and constructive group. If you're just getting started or you've been working on your site for a while, it's a great place to ask questions, bounce ideas off of fellow BDers, uh, and just a, a great positive place while you're working on your BD site. So certainly invite everyone to join us there. And just a little bit quick snippet about Webinar Wednesdays. There are a few uh, new names here. Uh, who do we have here? Andrea, I think, is new. Glenn, um, Afshan, uh, Afshanafe, excuse me for, uh, for butchering that, but the welcome to the webinar. So just a little bit about Webinar Wednesday. So thanks to your suggestions and emailing into the support team, week after week, we are pushing new updates and features into the platform. And Webinar Wednesday is a great way for us to share with you some of the upcoming or newly released features that can actually help you grow your community. So we'll cover topics uh, related to increasing your traffic, converting visitors to members, identifying revenue opportunities, and more to help you grow your online community. Actually, today's tip of the week is about uh, SEO, optimizing your SEO. So 
a part of it is increasing traffic and optimizing your SEO. So if you have questions on any of these topics or anything else about your membership site, uh, please save them. We should have plenty of time uh, towards the end of the webinar for uh, the Q&A section. All right, and since the last webinar, there have been a ton of updates. More of them were small patches and fixes, not necessarily notable uh, to visually show in the webinar. So I wanted to highlight some of the upcoming features that are coming down the line, and a lot of these are game-changing. We've mentioned some of these before, but now they are on the cusp of being released. Uh, so we're gonna stop, start here uh, with this, this big one here about the email newsletters. We've been talking about it for months. I'm going to show you just we've covered it in a previous webinar but there are some new people here i'm going to show you a glimpse of the enhanced newsletter features and analytics that are coming soon we hope to hope to cross our fingers have it ready in two weeks for the next webinar if not then the the webinar immediately after that but it's going through its qa testing now it's a big overhaul update uh, so let me dive into that right now and just show you a quick snippet of what that's going to look like. So if you're sending newsletters from the BD system currently, this is not what it looks like. This is what it soon uh, will look like. So uh, right here, just on the main page, you're going to get a better snapshot of uh, your stats, uh, delivers, fails, opens, and clicks. And you can click on any one of these numbers and you'll see the actual people who comprise uh, this category for this specific email newsletter. From this, you can also create smart lists. So if you wanted to segment out uh, people who opened a particular newsletter and then omit them from a future newsletter, vice versa, you'll have those capabilities. Let's quickly dive into creating a new newsletter. We'll just give it a name called uh, Webinar Test. And what's nice is from here, you can actually choose from previous newsletters you sent and you can start working on them. I'll just choose a welcome email here. And you can see a preview of it. So if this isn't the one, um, you can choose from another one and find the nickname of the template. So um, after this release, we'll start adding in more uh, designed uh, email newsletters for you to choose from as your starting point. In addition to that, we'll also release shortly after this a few additional draggable content blocks so you can build newsletters a lot quicker. Right now, there's four essential blocks here that pretty much I think covers 60 75 percent of the design you'd want to do with the newsletter so we'll add in a few more blocks just to give you that a little bit more control so now we're here most notably now when you're creating a newsletter you can edit this newsletter here you don't have to create the template and then pin it to the newsletter and all that so you can edit your newsletter here um, I'll go to the preview tab. You get a nice preview of your newsletter here. And what's nice is, and we'll improve this over time as well, but you can put a member ID here. So if you're using variables like their first name or their email address, you can actually see what the email template will look like with a sample member's info pre-filled in here in the preview window. So that'll be a nice touch there. And I think the most valuable part of the new email newsletter update is the ability to include smart lists but more importantly you can exclude smart lists so it'll send to everyone on this list but it'll also exclude people uh, who are on this list so if they happen to be in the all members uh, list but they are in this don't send to list they will be omitted giving you more granular control of your newsletters and then lastly if we go to the schedule email newsletter tab here the best part about this is currently you can just send your email newsletters now. So if you want to send it early in the morning, you got to wake up and click that button. Uh, with this update, you'll be able to schedule your newsletters for the future. So you can select tomorrow uh, at 8 a.m. And what's nice about this as well, it will be pinned to your website's time zone. So you'll be sending it in this example, 8 a.m. at the time zone you've set for your website so we're really excited about uh, this newsletter update and hopefully fingers crossed it'll be released uh, uh, by the next webinar all right this next one here is currently being worked on uh, we're also a few weeks out from this but this is a really big section of the admin that's going to make a big impact the ability to tag members uh, in the admin area you can as the admin create custom tags and then pin members to those tags but easier if I show you a visualization of what that looks like. So currently we have smart lists. Smart lists are basically groups of people based on filters you've created. 
Tags will be manually explicitly assigning members to tags you create. So it's going to be in the same section as the smart list, smart list and tags. Uh, but here you'll be able to, as the admin, create custom tags. So if you want, you know, people we love, people who said no, uh, people who are in New York, people who are in New York, California, and Kansas, you can assign them a tag and then create a smart list of those people uh, as you see fit. Uh, so you'll be able to create your tags here. And then from here, um, this is the quick edit pop-up. You can assign tags to a specific member. There'll also be a bulk action for this. So you can do a bulk search for certain members and assign or remove tags from them. And then lastly, when you're looking at your members on the search members page, you'll be able to search members who have a specific tag. So uh, if you want people who attended an event and you want to manually assign a tag to them or what have you, uh, this is going to give you that, that ability. And there's a lot of use cases uh, for this uh, and we'll realize more at once it's released. So uh, this is a little bit ways out, a few weeks out, but it is coming soon. Also, another upcoming feature we're excited about, a very small change, but it's the ability to display the star rating uh, on the homepage for your recent members um, or your featured members. And let me show you that as well. So currently, uh, with your streaming members on the homepage, uh, basically on the right side here, this everything pets, that's basically what you can have here. You can choose to show uh, the short description or their category and location. You can choose to show this button. What we're going to do is add the ability to add their star rating underneath their photograph as well. So a seemingly very simple update, but it should add a lot of uh, color and animation to your homepage with those star ratings. Um, and what's even cooler is you'll be able in the in the settings for this you'll have two two settings display star ratings or not and then only display members with a certain level of star rating so you can choose if it's star ratings are not required or they have to be one to five stars or greater uh, so you'll be able to have some control so if you just want to show your five star or four plus star members on the home page uh, that's an incentive for your members to uh, start getting reviews on your site so they can you know show up on that spot And this one here is, is should be released soon as well. Uh, this one is the ability to search your members by their country name. Uh, so if you want it, and, it, and it checks their IP address. So what we're doing is we're checking their sign up IP uh, for you guys or their last login IP, and we are pinning that to the country. And then you'll be able to search your members based on uh, the country they signed up from or the login. So if you're noticing some spam on your spam on your site, you want to search a particular country, see if the spam is coming from there. Uh, you'll be able to do that with this. Uh, if a member says they're located in the United States, but their their last login was in um, I don't know Myanmar or something like that, um, you might want to you know further moderate that member and see what's going on there and things like that. So that's gonna have a screenshot of that as well. Uh, so what you'll have here is another filter here and the user IP country, and you can check mark the countries you want to search. And also here, next to the IP address, we will put uh, the actual name of the country here so you can visually see that as well. So you don't necessarily always have to search, but you'll have an indicator here with the country name. So again, this will be a great way to kind of moderate members a bit uh, better. Uh, and see if there's any trends. Maybe you serve the UK and you're noticing a lot of uh, people from Ireland or, or nearby countries uh, in Europe signing up. You might want to extend uh, your market reach to those, uh, to those new segments. All right, this is another big one. And um, it, sh again, should be released in, these are all a few weeks out, but uh, email alerts for new comments on posts. So a while ago, we released the feature where you can leave comments on posts, reply to post comments, um, but there were never email alerts for those. So uh, we've created the logic of how we want to implement that uh, effectively on a post page, like a blog article or an event or a coupon, whatever uh, type of post it might be. Uh, you'll have this follow comments dropdown and you can choose to get the, the person who's logged in, you have to be a member to follow comments, so they'll get the uh, express member registration or, or whatever it is, um, and they can choose to get notified for any new comments, only replies to their own comments, uh, and then if they are following something, they can choose to stop following uh, the comments as well. So it's gonna be something like this, 
and then it'll be a simple email template that just sends a notification ping to them. Uh, probably in a phase two, uh, we'll implement a webhook or something of that nature so you can set up kind of a SMS, uh, uh, SMS text messages for this type of thing if you wanted to as well. And then lastly here, um, we are, we've announced this earlier. Uh, we, we were trying to figure out uh, the data providers to work with and things like that, but uh, we are going to have a new add-on for instant business data. This is going to give you access to millions of business records. Uh, you can do a search for a location and a category like dentists in Milwaukee, and it'll show you how many results there are, and you can choose how many you want to add uh, to your site. Every BD site is going to get like a minimum of 25 or 50 uh, data records that they can add to their site. And then what we've done is we tried to find, um, we tried to negotiate and find the best data source to give value to BDers. Uh, so for additional data that you want to your site, it'll be at a nom nominal cost, pennies on the dollar uh, for the data. So um, that's coming soon. And we actually do have a screenshot of what that add-on would look like. Uh, shout out to the arts department, actually David Rockland, the digital strategist here, coming up with the, the cover photo for the add-on, instant business data. Uh, this one is going to come on the tails of the tagging system. So the tagging system is going to come first. And the reason for that is when you choose to import or bulk import some business data, we want to make sure you can tag that group of members. And when you tag it, then you can export them. You know where they came from. If you need to delete them or re-add them, you'll basically have maneuverability and control. So, um, so some big updates here before we move on to the tip of the week. Uh, feel free to raise your hand and ask any questions about these upcoming features, maybe a comment uh, that you have, which one you're excited about, and then we'll move on to the tip. So feel free to raise your hand. Let's see if we have any questions. And we got Stephen here. All right, Stephen, how are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you so much. Great, great updates. I have a quick question, clarification question, and then also a question about something you had mentioned a long time ago to see if it's still in the works or ever going to be in the works. Sure. First question sure. is uh, the tags. Um, I guess I'm just not understanding the difference between tags and smart lists because it sounds like you can do. I'm just trying to understand the use case. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Um, so a, a smart list is dynamic. So if you make a smart list of all your active members or all your members in California. Um, new people who join, Cal who sign up and say they're in California will automatically be added to that smart list. It's almost like a living, it's a living thing. Got with, it. the with the tags, it's static, meaning you're going to explicitly tag people <clears throat> based on certain actions they take. And this is just the beginning. Once this is implemented with Zapier and if members do certain actions like fill out forms on third party sites and you want to tag them that they filled out this form from your other, it's going to be really, it's going to be really versatile how you can use the tagging system. And then from the tags, you can create smart lists based on those who's tagged and who has certain tags. Got it. So you can create a smart list from a tag. Okay. That's, right. that's, is that, is that, is that going to happen later or does it happen? Once that's being it? worked on now. So we're, we're looking for the in the next few weeks. So April, May, that should be okay. released. And then right after that's released, we're gonna focus on the instant business data coming on the tails of that. Okay, great. And then the-, the On the, the heels the of that, I should say. <laughs> All right, the next question that I have, um, again, this is a risk that you guys have when you kind of mentioned what's coming, what's forthcoming. But a, long, a while ago, you had mentioned that uh, there was consideration whereby the BD administration, no, no, whereby the member, the member can download their LinkedIn profile pretty easily, like click a button and everything gets downloaded and populated over at BD side. Is that something that's still being considered or is it sort of off the list or? If we mention that, it was probably years ago. Um, okay. Yeah, I, um, I know what you're saying. I know when they, I know when people sign up using the Facebook login, um, mm -hmm. it does fetch their name. Um, and their email address, of course, because that's going to be their login. Yeah. But um, it doesn't take um, like their profile photo, their phone number, and stuff like that. I think it was mm -hmm. dialed back because of like data data security stuff and that uh, Cambridge thing that happened. And you know, uh, but yeah, that's yeah. not the real reason. But you know, um, but the list no, is not on the list. Is, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's, it's not, not on, on the list. list. Yeah, yeah. It's fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thanks. That's it. All right. Good questions as always, mm -hmm. Stephen. Thank you. All right, let's see if anyone else has their hand up here. Yep, I see Rich here. All right, Rich, how are you doing today? 
Oh, it looks like you're self-muted there, Rich. Nope. No, it look, looks like you're muted, Rich. Do I need to unmute you? Oh, you're muted by me. Apologies. All right, Rich, you're with us here. Cool. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I was clicking on it. wasn't working for some reason, um, which is always ironic as a podcaster having a mute issue. Um, so a uh, couple of – one question on the star reviews and then two rapid-fire questions, time permitting, or after the um, tip of the week. But on these star reviews, um, Badge, you'll be able to view those on the profile. Can we add, like, uh, the verified, you know, check as well – or any badges or that's a uh, the verified would be a valid one let me uh yeah. make a note of that actually just a moment here and actually you know badges are kind of cool like a lot of websites you know will have like um a little icon representing you know the type of member but yeah but i know verified is already part of the program but that'd be kind of cool to add to the stars yeah that's what people that's that's awesome. awesome okay and then um uh, and I have a um, question like on the newsletter because it's a pretty powerful system. Is there a way to like um, any way to be able to take like a member's profile and kind of autofill it in the newsletter by just putting in, um, you know, their member a link to their profile that would either be embedded or would auto populate? Like sometimes you can do that on a LinkedIn or other stuff where you put in the uh, URL like on Twitter or social media and it'll you know, carry over the images because we think it'd be kind of cool in the newsletter to feature members, but not have to copy and paste, you know, their photo and all their all their content. Gotcha. So like a, a card of a member, but you would have yeah. to put the card in there and then also specify which member you want to sh that card to be pre-filled with. Yeah, yeah. Probably not specifically that, but. Uh -huh. What I can imagine is we could create a, a content block that yeah. is kind of set up for that. So you just have to change the the image and their name and just a couple pieces of data. But the the layout of it will be uh, would lend itself to something like that. Yeah, that'd be really cool because if we can yeah. <clears throat> with the newsletter be able to spotlight you know our rock star members or that kind of thing or new members our group whatever that'd be cool. Okay, yeah, and then that's 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 an interesting one actually. Thank you for suggesting that. Cool. And then last question, since I'm on a rapid fire on a roll here, um, you know, unless I'm missing something, when is there a way like uh, when people go to log in that they're, you know, if you can pull up a, you know, it may or may not have to pull up a, a, a website, but like um, when they type in their password, there's, you know, there's the view option that are a lot of websites so they can prevent from, um, you know, uh, having a typo in their password. You know where you have that little yeah, view yeah, icon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the eyeball where kind of yeah. you can see your password as you're typing. Yeah, I think that was on our roadmap. Actually, it's just a little down the list. Um, yeah, yeah that'd basically be super. Changes, you think that would be that would be super helpful? Oh, big time! Because I know, like, I'm logging in as most everybody is on a lot of different websites, and we all have different, you know, password credentials requirements for all these different websites. And you forget your passwords and stuff like that, and you go to type it and you can't recall it, but maybe you're typing in it wrong or you can't visually see it. And so then after so many attempts, it logs you out or you just get gotcha. frustrated. Gotcha. And then we have members kind of completely, constantly resetting their password because they can't visually see it. So uh, I yeah. got you. I mean, we do have a card for that. I'll see where it is on our list. Uh, I think it's, it's not too difficult as well. So thank you for mentioning that. Cool. And then I'll save, uh, my last is about uh, member credits. I'll save that as a cliffhanger for after the uh, tip of the week, if time permits. <laughs> you got it, Rich. Thanks, Thank man. you. Appreciate that. it. Thank you. All right, we got one more here. We'll move on to the tip of the week. We got Roger. How you doing, Roger? Uh, there we go. Am I on? You're on, Roger. How are you today? Where are you Am calling I, in from? Now? No, you're good. Okay, great. Thanks. I I was had a question from last time, and uh, we ran out of time. I I don't need you to actually show me how to do this, but I did put together a thing where. Uh, my client could uh, put on an event and let people register for it. And I have screwed up, somehow screwed up the, the whole thing. And I, all I'm wondering is where, do you have a, a record of where you have your videos that show how to set that up properly? I did find one, but it looked like it was outdated because the uh, links and things it said to go to weren't there anymore. So it was like it was an old video. So I was wondering if you had a newer one. What was the video on? 
Uh, I, when I, I'm, I'm adding, uh, yeah, using the, um, you know, event module to, uh, or not a module, but uh, yeah, I guess it is. Oh, uh, the, the the download digital, uh, the, the digital yeah, the products digital, to sell event yeah, ticket? Yeah, download stuff. Gotcha. Right. All right. Yeah, let me send that to you real quick, and then we'll move on to the, uh, the tip here. Um, Great. Yeah, I got you here. Um, da -da, here you go. How to create and sell event tickets uh, through your BB site. This should be what you're looking for. If not, uh, have a look see at it while we're doing the tip. And if not, uh, we can we can uh, find it in the in the Q and A yeah, section okay. a little later. Okay, that looks like the one I was on, but I'll I'll check it out again. So thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, guys, let's move on to the tip of the week. Simon, I see your hand up there. Keep that hand up. We'll get to you in just a little bit. Uh, today's tip of the week is SEO roadmap: where to make edits to optimize your BD websites. SEO. So we're not necessarily going to dive into SEO strategies and, and how to leverage them for Google, but we want to show you where you can access uh, different places to edit the SEO of your site. So David was uh, kind enough and did a great job putting together some slides covering this topic. And if it's all right, I can pass things over to you now, David. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we won't be diving into specific SEO strategies and, and tactics and best practices. There's just so many variables that go into search engine optimization with each and every website, uh, just based on a bunch of different factors. But there is a lot of flexibility with the BD platform in terms of uh, adding different content and editing certain SEO settings for your website to really try to optimize it as best as possible. And so that's what we wanted to cover in this tip of the week here is where to go to make specific changes uh, to your website's SEO. So uh, starting off real basic here, just wanted to cover uh, some real simple key points first. Why SEO is so important. Most of us probably know this, but if it's our first time building a website, search engine optimization is incredibly important for every website. Most of it is already done out of the box with BD, but having your website optimized for search engines can boost your site's visibility in uh, search results, driving organic traffic. That's traffic that comes to our website naturally on its own. Uh, that in turn leads to uh, credibility and trust with users when we're ranked highly uh, in search results based on specific keywords and search terms. It's also an incredibly cost-effective way to gain uh, website visitors and new members, uh, long-term traffic without those ongoing advertising and other marketing costs. Uh, if we can optimize our website for search engines and being ranked high in search results, then hopefully we won't have to pay quite as much on other marketing efforts to get uh, visitors to our website and gain new members. And then lastly here, just a little more broadly speaking, uh, having high search rankings can help us stay ahead of any of our potential competitors in, uh, in the industry or the niche that we're in and increase our uh, overall market share. And just a quick tip, you know, SEO is awesome and it is very important, but it should be one uh, one spoke on your marketing wheel. There's also there are there are ads, and you should uh, certainly explore that if you can get a fair uh, return on your investment with those. Uh, there's social marketing, uh, there's referral programs, affiliate programs, and more. Um, so SEO should be one uh, again one spoke on that marketing wheel that you have, and I'll just uh, leave it at that there. Great point, and it's not something that we necessarily want to constantly obsess over. Uh, really, a more important factor here is having uh, unique content uh, on our website that's relevant to uh, the overall theme of our website, what users might be searching for in Google and other search engines. And so that brings us here to this uh, slide, some of the key SEO elements. Meta titles, so this is basically just the title of the specific web page that we might be editing or creating. Uh, this obviously shows in search results. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, it does contain some of the primary keywords for whatever the page is talking about. We don't wanna load it with keywords. It doesn't need to be a string of just random keywords, but it should include uh, some of the main search terms that people might be searching for related to that page. 
Same thing with uh, the description, the meta description in search results that appears directly underneath the page title. So we can see that here in the screenshot to the right. This is just a screenshot of uh, some Google search results. So we can see the meta title in blue and then the page description or the meta description just beneath that. Another uh, SEO element would be meta keywords. So these aren't quite as critical as the titles, the descriptions and the overall content as a whole. Um, but if we have the ability to add keywords to specific pages with BD, we do, uh, we do want to add some keywords. And again, we want to make sure that they are relevant and we don't want it to be just a long list of, of random keywords where we're kind of hoping to, um, to get ranked in each and every search result. We really want them to be specific. And also lastly here, main heading. We do only wanna have one main heading per page. So if you're looking at the HTML code of a web page, that would be the H1. Uh, we only want one main heading per page. That should reflect the main content of the theme, similar to the page title. Um, and then we can have some additional subheadings throughout the rest of the page or the piece of content that we're publishing. But again here, the main thing is to emphasize unique and relevant content. Um, we wanna utilize relevant headings and subheadings. And if we can, we also wanna incorporate internal and external links in the page or the content that we're publishing on our website. So if there's a piece of text in uh, the blog article or the web page that we're publishing uh, that is relevant to another piece of content or another page on our website, we wanna link that so that if a visitor is reading that page, they can click that link to read some more information on another page on our website, or if we wanna link out to a third party reputable uh, website, we can do that as well. And just some tips here about Google and Bing and how they display your website in their search results. Sometimes the title, even though you set an explicit title as it should be here, they're always experimenting with user experience and sometimes they might, um, uh, they might amend what you've written or they might take another piece of your page and show that as the title or the description. So if you're searching, searching your site in Google, you might notice that uh, they've modified uh, things sometimes. Um, and one more piece here that we actually uh, forgot here, David, is the featured image. Uh, we've noticed in search results now, uh, more and more search engines, again, not always, but they might include uh, an image here on the right uh, to complement the, the specific search result. Uh, BD sites do uh, account for that. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But uh, another key SEO element I would say is what's called the OG image uh, in the meta tag, uh, and BD sites definitely include that. So. Uh, just wanted to mention that as well. And yeah, with that, I guess this side, just uh, moving on to this side, uh, the good news is BD sites are SEO ready. Uh, they're pre-equipped with all the essential elements that is that are needed for Google to recognize and rank your site and your content. Uh, and as you add members and pages to your site, all the SEO value will continue to grow. A lot of questions from people who are kind of checking out Brilliant Directors is, do I need to build a page for each city that I want to target? Um, or do I need to make the profile page for each member? And, and the thing is, they're all dynamically created. As the member joins your site, their profile page is automatically created. We kind of take that for granted because it's so easy and seamless. Same thing with the search results pages. In, in older systems, you have to manually uh, account for and create and build uh, a specific search results page, but all of this is done dynamically. So uh, just add, as you grow your site, the pages grow and that helps with your SEO value. And now with that, um, I think David, now we can go into kind of showing people where to make SEO edits on your site. And a lot of this stu stuff might be familiar uh, for if you're familiar with the Brilliant Directories platform, but there's gonna be a few gems in here that you may have not known. Um, and I'll go ahead and start with the home page. Where can we edit the SEO elements of your home page? I'll try to breeze through these uh, quickly because there's just a small handful of them. And if we have more questions, we can take them in the Q and A. So to edit your home page SEO, and let me get a site queued up here that we can kind of practice on. Give me one a quick moment. Okay. All right, perfect. So. Uh, here's our webinar test site. So to edit the SEO of the homepage, and let's go to the homepage of this site here. 
Um, so we can see the meta title and let's look at the source code. That's always fun as well. Uh, so the meta title is here, uh, the member directory. This is what would show in the Google search results as the title of the page. And then we see the description and the keywords. Uh, and if we scroll down a little bit more, we have the uh, OG image. Let me search for that as well. And we'll show you where you can make that. So here's the OG image. There's an image uh, set here. And let's go to um, the dashboard, go to my content and web page builder. And we're going to look for the first one here is usually home page, and we can click edit. And you'll notice uh, here there's a link here. It says to go to the design settings. The home page is a special page. You can have special elements on there and whatnot, the hero background. So it does tell you to go to design settings for some of those things. But um, every page in the web page builder has a tab called SEO settings. Um, and again, this is what I was talking about. BD sites are kind of primed for your SEO. Um, they are pre-filled with variables, so as you change the variables in your general settings, uh, they will be adjusted for, uh, for your site. And I will show you an example of that. Let's go to general settings. And we can see here uh, the industry name is professional and the profession name, profession name is members. Uh, these are just two small things you can do. Let's use the example there. Let's say the industry is interior design and the profession name was interior uh, designer. And save the changes. And we'll just go ahead and refresh uh, here, actually, the code view. And we'll notice that the title of the page now says Interior Designer Directory, find interior designers. And again, here's my new website that actually corresponds to the website name. So we can just call that uh, whatever it might be here. Uh, so here we have several things that David pointed out, the, the page meta title, the description, and the keyword. Yeah, if the variables are confusing for you, this is just so when a new site launches, it's all pre-filled for you. It'll just work dynamically. You could erase this and write your own meta title if you choose to. Uh, same with the meta, meta description. And a bonus here is uh, the social media sharing. So if someone shares your homepage or whatever page it may be on social media, you can choose what the share title is going to be, the share description, and add a... Uh, social media share image here but this is also your og image so even if the site's not being shared on social media you're going to want to i highly recommend it adding an image here uh, so that even in the google or bing search results when they choose to show an image for a specific page there is a chance that they might sh uh, show this image and that's going to give you more real estate and visibility in those serps in those search engine results um, so that is basically where you can edit the home page now, very similar to the home page, static pages, if you're creating one-off pages with the web page builder, that will follow suit. I'll just quickly go here to the web page builder. So we had our home page, um, you know, your pricing page, your about page, you might create static pages as we call them uh, for many different reasons. Let's edit your about page. And here is the about page for the site. If we go to SEO settings, we have the page title, description, and keywords. Now, when we didn't see it on the home page because that is in the design settings, but for your static pages, this is your H1, your main title heading. And this is what David was talking about. Um, this could be keyword friendly. It doesn't have to always be. It can just be, you know, about us as it was earlier uh, because user the user experience counts too. You don't want to keyword stuff your H1 title heading, uh, but you can get clever and find ways to, to do this, like, like um, um, our interior design mission, right? So you're putting the word interior design in there as the example, and this is your about page and things like that. So you, you want it to make sense, the H1, because that's what people actually see on the page. I'll just go here real quick. So this is our mission and promise. That's what it was earlier. But the meta title, you can get a little bit more creative with. And also, you want something that people are going to click on, right? So the meta title can also be a little clickbaity. You don't want to make it too spammy or anything like that, but something that's going to encourage or compel a click from a user uh, because that's what they're going to see in the search results when they're searching Google. And then the rest of the elements are the same here as well. Title, description, keywords. Um, now, about the keywords, Google dropped valuing uh, the comma separated list of keywords a long time ago they might uh, attribute a small value to it but uh, people were just keyword stuffing in there taking advantage of it and 
Really now Google looks at the whole context of an entire web page. Uh, so that specific meta tag, the meta keywords is not very uh, valued by Google at this time. And then of course we have the social media uh, options here. One point of clarification I do want to chime in with, we had Neil over on YouTube uh, asking if BD automatically creates the H1, that main heading for blog posts, as well as pages and other forms of content. It does. Uh, and what we're kind of showing here throughout the rest of this presentation are just some extra steps you could take if you really wanted to make some specific SEO changes to the various pieces of content throughout your website. If you didn't want to do any of this, you don't have to. The BD system really does take care of uh, pretty much everything straight out of the box uh, in a more general sense. I think that's well said. The, everything is turnkey with the BD system. So if you don't want to do any of this, you don't have to do any of this. Uh, as your members create their profiles and posts and the search results pages, that pretty much is 99% of what your directory or membership site is. All the SEO is taking care of for you. Uh, this is just showing you where you can go if you want to enhance things a bit further. Uh, so this is more for navigation and, and as David, like a roadmap on where to go to make certain changes. Um, you know, once you reach a certain plateau, you're going to want to edge your site a bit more with SEO. Uh, once you have your other mechanisms in place, like signing up members, the next frontier will be optimizing for SEO at some point uh, with, with a website. All right, so the next section here are those dynamic pages. So what is a dynamic page? It's a page that's all automatically created by the system and all the SEO is taken care of for it. So uh, if a member, if you don't have any members in Los Angeles, uh, there's no Los Angeles page, there's no results there. But once someone joins uh, from Los Angeles, that page will then automatically exist. Um, the pretty URL, I'll show you the difference in a second. Um, and um, it will be populated with members who are in that region. Now, what we want to do is figure out how to edit these dynamic pages, uh, and let me show you what they are first. There's a section in Brilliant Directories called SEO Templates, and for newbies and things like that, it might seem a little foreign, so hopefully this uh, little demo here will kind of uh, debunk any, uh, uh, any uh, confusion or, or what this might be about. So let's go to the front end of this site together. And notice I clicked on this magical orange button here, visit website. And when you do that visit website button, uh, you have this uh, kind of dark gray admin bar here. And let's actually do a just an open search here. Click the search button. Here is a search results page. And um, it has it has uh, the SEO elements right here. So uh, we see a title here, interior designers, find and compare interior design professional. So again, that's all I did is change those two things uh, in the general settings. And now we can see even the search results pages are optimized for the target market. Uh, we see the description, the keywords, et cetera. Um, and we also see here the title, interior designer results. But this is not a static page, this page won't be found in the web page builder. Instead, it's going to be found in a place called SEO templates. It's a dynamic page. And the way that we know that, if we come back here on the search results page, all we did was click this button, is when we have this navigation bar here, we can see that this is SEO template 200. So there's uh, there's SEO templates, there aren't 200 of them, but they're uh, labeled uh, in the 100s, 200s, 300s, etc. Uh, so let me just edit this SEO template. It should take me uh, to the admin area. It's pre-filling 200 here in the filter. And I can go ahead and customize this one. And we can see here we're seeing a lot of variables. The profession name, that was the profession interior designer. Um, and then the, we have a, a text label for results. But we can get rid of all this and say the official interior designer directory. You know, and we can even give it a subheading, say, find and search interior designers. Okay, let's save the changes here. Okay, great, let's go back to SEO templates and it took me there. Uh, so that was number 200, let's see where that is here. And it doesn't wanna show me that for some reason. Of course, on the webinar on the demo site, but let's refresh it, maybe something refreshed here. There we go. All right, so for some reason it wasn't showing it back in the SEO templates. It should be a customized SEO template here. And there it is, it just took a second to get there. So um, here it is, the uh, the search results. 
And if we click on this, we can see here the official interior design directory, find interior design. So we've actually enhanced this page now instead of saying interior designer results, which actually is true for the directory, um, we have optimized this. So what we've done is we've identified, and now it has the SEO template uh, 506 because we did go ahead and customize it. Um, so that is a custom template. And we can always come back here and find out what template a dynamic page uh, is using. And the same thing works for your post page. So if we go to latest news, these are the blogs on the site. It says website blog. We can go edit SEO template 300. So we can go here and we're gonna customize this one. And this is the H1 and H2. And actually, David, we didn't cover this. This is a post type. It's the website blog post type. So I'm actually happy that we kind of ran into this here. Um, to edit this, um, would it necessarily be, let me stop bouncing around, from the SEO template, because this is saying H1 and H2, uh, but that is actually in the edit post settings. So for post types, uh, for the search results pages, we can actually control the main heading and the subheading um, here in the edit post types page. So let's go to the blog edit post types. Website blog, we'll edit this. And this has a search results design tab. And we can see here the search results page title H1 and H2. So website blog is pretty boring. We can just say interior design news and resources, zhuzh it up a bit. Uh, and then we say, find everything interior design in our block or whatever, uh, anything clever you wanna come up with. But um, doing this, we're not locked into how the site comes delivered to you by default. That's just so we can deliver a site uh, to many people at once. It is meant for you to make these small modifications. So let's refresh this page now. And it's not just the website blog, it's interior design news and resources, and that is good for SEO. You can probably come up with more clever titles, uh, but that is the H1, the main heading, and it says find everything interior design in our blog. So uh, that is how you can control the subheadings here. However, with the SEO template, even though the H1 and H2 were from the post type, uh, we can, again, control the meta title, description, keywords, uh, and so forth, the social media share image. Uh, etc. Um, so let's come back here. Does that cover everything on this one, David? Because I know I go quick sometimes. The next slide is about it. Okay. The next slide is converting it so it doesn't work off of the dynamic uh, engine and it turns into a static page. So uh, let's see how we can do that together. So all of this is being powered. Basically, let's go back to the member search results page. It's being powered by the SEO template that kind of covers uh, uh, all the pages. So let's actually do a search for Los Angeles. I think this should be connected here. And let's search now. So it's done a, a search for Los Angeles in the member results. And we can see here that we have an H1, Interior Designer Results, Los Angeles, California, United States of America. So maybe you don't want the country here in this search results page. And the search results have the most SEO templates because it does combinations of locations, which include countries, states, uh, and cities, as well as their corresponding category combinations. So you can have city, state, and top level category, city, state, top level category, sub level category, and more. But um, again, it's all done for you. You don't necessarily have to edit it, but you certainly can. So this is telling us the SEO template is 216. And I want to go ahead and edit this and we'll cut out the country name here, just as an example. So we here, see here search results, member, country, state, city. Let's customize this. And we can see here, um, it's adding a, a, all this here, city, state, country. Let's delete this. And let's actually move this stuff around. Results for... The profession is interior designers. It's just wrapped in the variable. And I'll say in the state, the city and the state. Let's save that. And that will affect all the city searches that happen on my site. So all the dynamic city searches that are created 
uh, this will be the new H1 title. And then again, you can further modify the meta title, description, and keywords. So now it says results for interior designer. We can actually change that to be plural. Um, let me do that for you guys. Let's edit this. So to make any variable plural, instead of two percentage sign, uh, three percentage signs, we change it to two percentage signs, and that will make any variable plural. So let's come here and refresh this. Results for interior designers in Los Angeles, California. So we've dropped the country, kind of rearranged uh, the order of the elements here, but we have granular control. And another thing related to that is, the page meta title, you can also rearrange it here. So uh, it's saying city, state, country name. Maybe you want to get rid of the country name. Uh, and you can kind of, uh, again, if you in, on these pages, I would recommend keeping the variables because that city name is going to constantly change and be dynamic. It's not like a static page, like your About Us page. These are dynamic, so you want to continue uh, keeping the variables. But you can inject some keywords that you want the website as a whole to rank for, like interior a designer directory uh, at the end, uh, just as an example. Spelling's not right, but we get the point here. So you can cut some out, you can add some in, just to harden and strengthen your own website's uh, SEO here. And let's folk learn how we can convert pages into static pages even further. So this is still a dynamic page. It's, it's not a static page in your web page builder. Uh, but we can convert this to be a static web page. So let's do this. Uh, let's click Create Static Page. And what we want to do is we want to find out what the what's called the pretty URL because this is a search. It does. Uh, it's, it's got all these uh, kind of when you're doing a search on Amazon, it's got all this stuff here. But we know Amazon pages rank in Google. It's because they have a corresponding what's called a pretty URL. And if you do a control U and look for the canonical URL, the pretty URL for this page is here, forward slash Los Angeles, because that is what we uh, searched for. So I did a control U, it takes me to source code view here, and I look for canonical, you can just type in Canon uh, in your search, and I see here that it is Los Angeles. Uh, so what we can do is, let me backtrack a bit, uh, we're going to hit create static page, and I'm going to put Los Angeles here. And the page type is going to be a member search results page. And I'll just go ahead and save the changes. Perfect. Now, if we go to that URL, view page, the pretty URL is what ranks in Google. The dynamic URLs are not the ones that rank in Google. Those are when people are doing searches on your site. So now we have a page uh, for Los Angeles and let's update some things here. Uh, we can have a sidebar, uh, show sidebar, the member search results sidebar on the left side. Uh, we can say this, um, Los Angeles, and we've talked about this in previous webinars, um, interior designers, and you know we can have a subheading. This is where you can have a hero section for specific areas of your site. I'm not going to get too much into this. I'll just do something pretty quick. And you can see how you can create static pages and then also further customize. Now when you make it a static page, it's in your web page builder. I'll show you that real quick. This is taking a long time, so we'll just skip that for a moment. Uh, but let's save this. And I'll show you something you can do when it's a static page. Uh, let's give it a nickname too. Let's make it Los Angeles. Let's call it a city page. Los Angeles members and save the changes. And we'll go down to the web page builder. It's no longer a dynamic page. The member results will be dynamic, but the SEO will not be dynamic. It will be pinned to that page. So we can edit this city page now. We'll click edit. And when we do this actually, because it is its own static page, uh, we can actually put whatever we want in the meta title. We don't have to use the va variables anymore because it's not pinned to other pages uh, that might rely on that dynamic, uh, va those dynamic values. So Los Angeles uh, interior designers, and uh, we'll just say the name of the website. And you, of course, you can have a description. Let's save the changes. 
we'll refresh this here. Oops, not that one, this one here. We'll have the sidebar back here again. Okay, that's because I chose to have the hero section. Let me turn that off. We'll demo that in this example. Perfect, so we have Los Angeles interior designers and I'll go back to that source code view here. And we can see here Los Angeles interior designers, the name of the website. And we can see if the other elements are blank, they will fall back to the main SEO templates value. So you don't necessarily have to fill in those empty fields, uh, but if you can, it will override what it's relying on from the main dynamic SEO template. So that's good for you guys to know out there uh, who are doing these types of customizations and modifications to your site. Um, that it will fall back and rely if the if these fields are left uh, empty here. Uh, you could, if you want to actually have them blank for whatever reason, you could put a space bar in there and save your changes and it should be blank. Uh, so just to recap, when you're on a, a search page, you can create, create static page, get the canonical URL. In this case, it would be forward slash Los Angeles. If, you, if you're not familiar with going to the source code view, a good thing you can do is just come to the breadcrumbs on the member's profile page. And you can, for example, click on Los Angeles. And we see here, United States, California, Los Angeles. I'll take the Los Angeles away. Now you have a page for California and you can even take the United States away and you have California here. So um, all the slugs, if you're just wanting to find the shortest path to a specific location, you can just do the breadcrumb and uh, let's actually do this. And we know forward slash Los Angeles works, forward slash California works. So again, all this is done for you within the BD platform. All right, moving on from here, the member profile pages. So to customize is uh, customizing SEO template 100. Uh, and this is for the member profile pages. We'll click on this one here, Angel uh, Angelini Osteria, uh, a restaurant here. And for the member profile pages, um, again, they have their own meta titles. Let's actually look at the source code. Uh, so this is Angelina Osteria, restaurants, interior designers. So if we wanted to add the location in the title, uh, we certainly can. We see the description is created here. Connect with Angelina Astorio, restaurants in Los Angeles, California. Uh, find Angelini Astoria reviews and more. So uh, this, this particular description is focusing not only on the restaurant and the location, uh, but also the reviews and connecting with them or contacting uh, them. So uh, let's go here to the site and we can see that it is SEO template 100. And I noticed something here. Let's edit this. I would like to add uh, their city or state name uh, into uh, the, uh, the, the meta title. Uh, so what we can do here, and let me see, we have the location as a value here. So let's say we wanted to put full name, interior designer, and then we can put Los Angeles, that's their location. Looks like I cut something off there. Yes, okay. Let me open this up a bit, okay. Hyphen location and hyphen industry. So let's save the changes. And we can see here it's Angelina Osteria. And we do have a cheat sheet somewhere in our documentation with some of the variables that are available to use. If we refresh this here now, we could see here now Los Angeles, California uh, is in, in here is as part of the meta title. So uh, this is how you can edit the, uh, the uh, member profile page SEO uh, metadata. And to take it a step further, you can actually modify the URL structure of the profile pages. So we can see here that the website uh, URL for this profile is California, Los Angeles, restaurants, which is their top level category, uh, even though they have many sub-level categories, nine selected, uh, and then their name. Um, if you go to your settings, advanced settings, and then search for member profile URL structure, I'll just search for URL structure, uh, we'll be able to see uh, the current template and model uh, that creates the member's profile page. So if we search for URL structure, uh, we see here the member profile URL structure. So uh, if there's a country available, it'll do that, the city name, top level category, and then the member name, and we can see the slugs being added one by one. Um, but let's say we wanted to add their, their postal code. 
uh, we can do so here. Um, their uh, state, their full state name, uh, if we wanted that, and then we can drag the order of that here. Um, or we can use the short state name. So if we wanted CA instead of California, uh, we can add this and remove this here. Now, this won't update existing members' profiles. Uh, it will, uh, if members resave their information with different data for any one of these, it, or new members sign up, then their URL will be updated. That's because in case existing profiles are already ranking in Google, we don't want to lose uh, that link juice uh, and value that we have from them already. We'll cover it in just a little bit, but you can do the same with their post URLs. That's your blog posts, events, coupons, uh, et cetera. There is a post URL structure here. Now, staying on topic with the member profile URL structure, this is for all members. This will be the model that it will use. However, you can create a custom URL for a specific member. And I do want to highlight that this is could be an upsell opportunity for site owners or make it available only for your premium members. You, the admin, would have to manually set it for them. There are ways to allow them to do it, but generally you, the admin, would set the custom URL for them. Let me show you how uh, to do that. So let's say this person wanted a shorter, just like your Facebook page, you wanted a shorter one. They didn't want the cookie cutter one that's coming with the site. Um, let me show you, you can go to the admin area under search members. And what's cool here is we can search even the URL of a member. So this keyword field searches a lot actually. So Ange Angelini Osteria, let's go and do quick edit. Now this quick edit is you can edit specific elements for a specific member on your site. Of course, you the admin are going to do these things. And there's a tab here called advanced options. So for your coders out there and things like that, at the top here, just to let you know, you can include custom head, footer code like JavaScript, et cetera, or custom CSS on a single member specific profile page. So you can get pretty granular here. The second thing here is customizing the listing URL. So this is the current URL for this uh, member. Let's say we wanted to shorten that and just do Angelina Oster Angelini Osteria and save the changes. Perfect, let's see if that got saved. So now if we come here and we want to go, that should be their new profile URL. A lot shorter, a lot cleaner. Some members might value that, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you can sell this to members as an upsell uh, or a premium feature to have kind of a premium handle URL uh, for their profile page. A lot easier to share, obviously, because it is uh, shorter. Uh, and in addition to that, the custom URL for a member in that quick edit pop-up, let me find my place here. Uh, so you can customize the URL. Uh, and in addition to that, just like we talked about for uh, all the web pages, you can uh, customize the meta title so you can fetch it from the dynamic SEO template if you want and then make additional amendments and modifications to it uh, again same with the description and the meta keywords it just pulls it from the dynamic one uh, so you can um, make modifications uh, if you need it um, so that is how we can do a quick edit on a specific members uh, meta SEO data as well as their listing URL and kind of in the same vein, but for posts, like posts would be your blog articles, events, coupons, property listings, things like that. Same thing with the SEO templates. Uh, the SEO templates, the dynamic ones for, uh, for example, all your single post pages, these are your blog articles, uh, events, anything that's not a photo album with multi photos uh, that you kind of scroll through. Um, that is SEO template 302. Um, I won't go through all the specific details, but let me show you again how you can find that. So we could see if we go to a specific blog article here. Yeah, SEO template. So this one's already been customized. It's in the 500s. Let's go there and see what we did. So we can see here, uh, the uh, the meta details are here. So again, this is dynamic. When you're working in the SEO templates, remember that you don't wanna hard code like a city name, uh, unless that's the entire focus of your website. Uh, you wanna stick with the variables, but you can put single text in here, for example, by 
It's saying that, uh, you know, who the article was published by and the full name of the author, which is the member, as well as their location. Maybe you don't want the location in this because your site has nothing to do with searching locations. So again, you can uh, harden your SEO by removing things that might dilute uh, the meta title value. Uh, the more keywords you have, it dilutes kind of the value of all the other keywords. That's why it's good to keep them concise. Um, however, it's not bad to include things that are definitely uh, relevant. So let's actually look at this article's uh, title here. And let's see here. Uh, so this is sample SEO title. And let's see what else we had here. Oh, also, if there isn't uh, information available, it won't necessarily uh, include it. But uh, I'm not seeing the full name of the member here. It should be included. Let's see here. Ah, this is posted by the website admin. We see there's no author information because it's a hidden profile. So the system is smart enough to know that when uh, a member's profile is not searchable on the site, kind of like the admin of the site that has a member profile or other members who might be hidden or members only, uh, it will not show their name. However, so that's actually good to reference here. However, <clears throat> if it was available, uh, it would have shown in uh, the metadata there. Um, so same, uh, same logic and flow works here. Uh, you just search for the SEO template and then you can modify uh, the information there. Also, so you can do that for your photo album pages and your single post pages. Also, as I mentioned before, the URL structure for your post. Let's go back to the, uh, the advanced setting here and search for uh, URL structure. So we have the member profile URL and also the post URL structure. Uh, so we can see by default, it's post type and post title. Those are the two required elements here. Uh, but you can include, for example, the post author's name, uh, the post location, uh, and other elements here, the post ID, the post category. Uh, so if you wanted to have a longer URL for your post, uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing at all, uh, but you can certainly create that URL structure uh, here. And then any new posts that are created will follow this new URL structure uh, for them. So in this case, we can just see this is blog, and then the title of the article that usually generally works uh, very well. Um, and, but yeah, you can edit that there. And the bonus here is similar to the member profile URLs, you can further enhance the URL of a specific post on your site. Uh, and this is something new we added uh, not too long ago. So if there is a post here, so this one is sample blog article three, let's actually search for that one. Uh, we can go to our blogs here. Let's type this here and see if it picks that up. Nope. Let's see. This local blog. Doesn't want to find that. We'll come here. There we go. Okay. Sample blog article three. So what you have in these action links. So this is managed posts. This is all the posts of your site. This is your command center for all the user generated content on your site. If you click on customize URL, we can see here that it's using the default post URL. You can actually customize this and enhance it further if you want. You can, again, put whatever you need or want in here. Uh, and it will check if there's any duplicates because you don't want duplicate URLs. Two pages can't have the same URL. So it validates it and you can enhance the URL of this post. And then, of course, if you do this, make sure that you're doing a redirect for your older post. I think the system may or may not create that redirect, but you want to make sure that if you're ever changing URLs for seasoned pages that have been, pages that have been online for a while, you are creating a corresponding 301 redirect that takes the old URL and forwards all traffic to the new URL. I won't go into too much detail, but let me show you where you would do those 301 redirects. Uh, they are in the developer hub and you can go to 301 redirects and you can create a new rule. Uh, we can see here uh, updating the Angelina Osteria. It was automatically updated here. I didn't have to create that redirect. So this was the old URL, the source URL. It's redirecting to the new shorter one. I think the, again, the post updating the post URL will do the same thing. Uh, you can always come here and check. Uh, but if you need to create a new redirect rule, uh, just put your source URL here, whatever it might be, and the new page that it's linking to. Um, so yeah, important note for that. Uh, so yeah, URL structures, post URL structures. I think that ends um, all the areas where you can, again, this was a roadmap on where to edit SEO 
on your site. And David, do you think we left out anything or should cover any final notes with this? I think that covers the basics here. Okay, fantastic. I know it was a mouthful, but it's important stuff to know. Uh, and there, you can, there's even more we can do, but we kind of just uh, did the surface level items here. So with that, we can move on to the Q&A section. This is a free form. You can ask questions about your sites, raise your hands. Those of you who waited patiently, thank you so much. If you have questions at the tip of the week, et cetera, now would be the time. Just raise your hand or type them in on YouTube and we will try to get to as many questions as we can. I see a lot of hands up. Uh, I'll start here with Bill at the top of the list. How you doing, Bill? Nope, oh, looks like you left us there, Bill. Are you there? Sorry. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. So when somebody fills out a form on my website and um, I reply to them from the platform, is there a way, like I can see that a reply was sent, but is there a way I can actually see what the message was that I sent to them? Um, I love that you're asking that question. We are focused on, uh, with the email newsletter updates, part of that it will be creating an outbox and that outbox will store what your reply was uh, if you emailed them through the system. So coming soon is the answer for that. Um, and you'll you'll have an outbox. What it's gonna do is reconcile all your outbound mail and also show you what the body of that email was. Yeah, because it'll be helpful for when my VA goes in there, she can just copy and paste the response when she sees something that's recurring. Cool. Right, I'm with you there. Thank you for asking. All right, thanks so much. You're welcome. All right, we got uh, Dwayne here. Let me unmute you, Dwayne. Make sure you're unmuted on your end there. How you doing, Dwayne? I'm doing great. So when someone writes a review, is there a way to add stars to that? So instead of just the basic type it in where they could actually star rate it for our member? Oh. Okay, let's go to, so when people leave a review for a member, they're choosing a star rating automatically, actually. Uh, so here, let me, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen here. Yep. So if we go to write a review, Dwayne, um, there's a title, the actual review, and then there's a few criteria here that can be ranked. See, I don't have any of that criteria on my, my site. So how would I can get that? Can we check your site real quick together? Sure. What's the name of it? Uh, reviewlocalbiz.com. That's an important site to have uh, reviews on. <laughs> Let's get there. Let's get that uh, working for you. All right, let me quickly go to uh, a member's profile page on your site. And yeah, we can have it remember my, oops, I went too quick there. All right, yeah, we can allow that. Okay, we'll do a Griffin's Auto Repair and we'll write a review. Okay, yeah, I do see the criteria is missing here. There's two reasons that might be happening and we can get that fixed for you. Um, let me just check one thing here. Uh, it's either the text labels are empty because sometimes uh, people don't want all the criteria. They maybe just want the overall rating. So these are text labels. They're, they're dynamic text that you can clear out and it removes the entire line from here. So let's check your text labels first. And you do have your text labels, which would lead me to believe that it might be a custom form would be the second thing. And it is a not a form, which would lastly lead me to believe that it might be some CSS on the site. Granted, this is an odd one here that we're seeing. I haven't seen the star ratings not display on a site. Let me see, let me check with Mike, if anyone is uh, texting me on the side here with uh, reasons for that. That is an odd one. Let me just check your custom widgets here. No, you don't have anything here that would affect that specifically. Let me do one more thing. Let's open up uh, show widgets. This will show us anything custom on this page here. Nothing out of the norm, ordinary. That's just a review here. This way display rating options. Ah, okay. Under membership plans, I think there is a setting for, uh, for hiding the the star ratings just a moment let me check that okay. so that's not so right now they're still as a an unclaimed could that be it because they're unclaimed 
let's let's check out this this uh, thing here uh, i don't think it's because they're unclaimed i think it might be pinned to the membership plan so let me find out what membership plan this person is and this would be the we're watching troubleshooting in action here so this is unclaimed and i'm going to search for review and under profile page let's see here da, da, da. there's something hide review review star rating option let's that's what it is so we're gonna not hide that and save the changes uh, there was a setting for it so again some sites don't need the star ratings altogether so it, it just hides them um, so there you go so now they're back on your site so just to recap uh, we edited the specific membership plan that it's that's not on by default so maybe as you were kind of modifying things potentially or somebody uh, triggered that on uh, but it's under the profile page tab and all the member review settings we want to make sure this is off hide review star rating options easy enough thank you all right thank you okay great yeah we just troubleshoot a few things there but we got it for you Dwayne all right uh, let's keep uh, going down the list here. I see Lisa. Let me get you here, Lisa. How are you doing today? Hi, Jason. Uh, I want to say, first of all, the newsletter thing and the SEO thing is right on time for me because I'm working on both of those things. So my question is for newsletters, when, um, your variables. Will you be supplying a more robust list of variables that we can add to those newsletters? What what type of variables will you be look, like expecting or wanting? So, I mean, obviously the regular ones that are in the uh, email templates already. Um, and it would be helpful to have at least one where they can either log into their member dashboard or go to their profile page so that if I say to them, do you have this turned on on your profile? Click here to view your live profile. I gotcha. Okay. Um, it gets me clicks. Like I call it a company listing page. And right. when I came from WordPress, I, I had uh, one built into the, my email templates so that they could immediately go either log into their back end or go directly to their live profile. I'm with and you. I'll probably, no, those are great. Those are great variables. I'll probably come up with more because I have been on an email crusade for the past couple of years. And that's why I say, yeah. I've been using Active Campaign, and if I can switch over to BD and have it more internally and not have to do so much web hooking, that would be. Right. I <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. I know two other variables that you might like is one is going to be their profile photo image or their logo photo image, which could come in handy uh, when you're creating some emails. And also, uh, I think like Rich was mentioning, like just a little module that would stream like recent members or some other dynamic content on the site that it just kind of does a simple uh, layout of, of some dynamic content from the site. So that would be really helpful because that is a great upsell, you know, for sponsored newsletters and stuff like that, where you can plug in that little module and it's already filled in for you. I love that idea when he mentioned it. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for the for the positive support and feedback. Appreciate it, Lisa. And then, and then the only the only other comment I have on the update was: Will there be a post notification for admins? In your updates, you said that people were going to be able to get an email when they posted a comment on a post. Yes. Will um, so actually, that's a good question. So currently, the admin I think does get noted does not get notified actually uh, that would be uh, an admin setting i'll add that as a note there so you can get pinged whenever there's a new reply to any post yeah. as well yeah. um because right now you can moderate posts but there's no ping you got to check log into your admin to check uh manually so i think i will add that to there as well so admin uh email notification when new post comment created and that's going to be an admin setting not a front end setting when you're looking at a post okay yes. thank amazing. you amazing thank you lisa that's fire right there all right good stuff and we got sean here i'm going to unmute you sean just make sure you're unmuted on your end sean and you should be good to go 
Okay, hi. Uh, I appreciate that. We're talking about the SEO. A couple of questions. Uh, are we able to purchase a dedicated ID for hosting or the US as a part of the package? Say that. Well, it was a little hard to hear you. Are you able to purchase what? Dedicated IP. Dedicated IP. Yes, I think you can email the BD support team and they have a, a dedi dedicated IP option. Um, I forget how much it runs. I think it's somewhere, don't quote me on this. I think it's 35 to a hundred dollars or something for a dedicated IP. Um, so yes. Is it per month? Um, you know what? I'm not too familiar on that because I don't see it so much. Um, I know we offer it. I should know the price to be honest. That's shame on me, but, um, email the support team. It is, it is a product that or service they offer having a dedicated IP for your site to my knowledge. I'm 70% I'm sure on that. Uh, and they would have more pricing information on that. Yeah, because you are facing some bad neighborhood IP or some bit of website that they're using the same IP and they don't have any reputation from Google perspective. So it's hurting RSEO. We do it. The other question I have, I think last time I asked, is it possible to be able to sort based on the reviews per member? So when you go to the back office, there is a drop down menu that shows you the latest and newest, uh, more credit or more revenue. But does it show for our purpose, for marketing purpose, which of the member they have the highest uh, sort based on the number of the views? You know, directly because that's an issue for us when you try to resell or renew the membership. It's very important to show them that hey, since that date you received two thousand review or hundred ninety reviews. But so now you bring up a good point here. Let me. So we have the. Um, so there's a couple things you can do. Let me show you real quick. Okay. Um, let me find a member that has reviews on this site real quick. I'll show you what you can do. Uh, da, da, da. Let me go to, anyone have a review here? This guy has a review. Okay, sample member one, he has, he has one review. Uh, if you go to, give me a moment here. Yes, there is a page you can link them to that's separate from their profile page that will show them how many reviews they have to, to answer your question. Let me show you how to get there, okay? Uh, let me just copy this. And uh, okay, his member ID is one. So bear with me. Let me again. I'm gonna recall from the top of my head. So if we go to review, or reviews. Okay, so your site has a page called reviews. This site only has one review for one member. Um, but if you do user ID equals one, let me see if that works. Yeah, this should this should let me, let me put three here. Then there's no user ID. Three has no reviews. No, that wasn't correct. Let me think real quick. Um, we just pushed this update. Let me ask the BD bot. How can I get the URL for search results for a specific member's reviews? Let's see. Let's cross our fingers here. Da, 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 now we get to, no, this is not correct. Okay. Uh, no, that's not correct answer. If you want to ask it in the Facebook group, because I, I just can't recall off the top of my head, there is a way to get a, a link. It's going to be, it's either user ID or, yeah, that's it. User ID, no, no underscore, I think. Yeah, there you go. See, user I reviews. Let me mm -hmm. put this in the chat here. Yeah. And that will be the link for that. I, I, had to, I had the underscore there. So it's without just user ID, no underscore equals and their ID number, and it will pull all the reviews they have here. But you again, you, you gave me a good idea, actually. We have the profile statistics add-on. What we should add there is, because it tracks their profile count, since you're talking about wanting to add value before they cancel, this will show them how many clicks to their website they got, how many profile views they got, we should also, with those stats, show them the count of reviews that they have. So I'm going to make a note of that there. So thank you, Sean. All right, good questions there from Sean. Let me just quickly make a note here, guys, about uh, this, the uh, uh, display reviews count. Thank you for that. All right, we got Veronica here. Let me unmute your microphone, Veronica. See, uh, looks like you're... 
muted on your end. You can unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, how are you? Today? Oh, excellent, great, great. I'm new uh, to BD, but I am loving it. It is a dream come true for me. I'm in the spa industry, uh, and so I created a directory. I had the domain name Spa Events for 30 years, never used it. Wow. Okay. And now I am using it, and I was offered $15,000 for the domain name, so I'm thinking it's kind of hot. Okay. Um, nonetheless, created a directory uh, for that. Didn't sleep for four days, got it up. It's running now. My question, I have a, a lot of questions, but I'm just going to ask one question today. So I put in the question chat, um, I have spyevents.com. Obviously, I want people to search for spa events, but I'm just wondering with SEO, um, how that's going to work what is going to be some of the you know three key factors that i need so that when people are searching for spa events um i'm thinking it's kind of almost a no-brainer but then again there's quite a few spa events going on out there um, that are probably using keyword spa events so i'm thinking for me less is going to be more um because it's spy events so what is your thought on that as far as what I should use for SEO and um, keywords and, and that type of thing in this situation? Great, great question. Can I ask you a question? Yes. What is a spa event? I, we love spas at BD. We love our massages and it's a cool down, right. but what is a spa event? Okay, so a spa event um, is like a spa expo for professionals. They go to different spa events. A spa event can be in your town. Maybe you're throwing a spa party. Um, maybe you are um, a product rep and you're doing, you know, some product demos or something like that. A spa event can also be just, you know, a spa or um a spa professional, which I'm also having uh, spa professionals to join. Uh, on the site as members, but I've also looked at all of the different spa events that go on around the country. It can even be a tea expo, which we have the World Tea Expo every year. We have massage conferences. There's about probably about 35 massage conferences that go on throughout the year. I got um, you. Okay. It, so. it's, it's a lot. I have about 400 I something people to reach out to for that. I'm with you. Okay. Um, so spa is like the broad, um, like the broad name for it. So, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's really good. My Even vegans. <laughs> be, what do you mean? Even vegans, like people who are like, uh, you know, health and wellness, Hol holistic, uh, holistic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and then but everything you said so far is, is I'm thinking of hardware. It's the, it's like the spa, it's like a spa conference. You're looking for merchandising products, you know, massage chairs, pedicure chairs, mm -hmm. and things like, is that, is that more what it's leaning towards or, or like massage convention? I'm thinking like there, there's like rollers and the beds that people walk around and travel with to go to clients' homes. Or if you're like a, a retail brick and mortar, like the beds to have, is that, is it more product based? Um, so, product based? so it's it's kind of it's kind of half and half. So here's the thing: the the real the the real premise of the site is for you know anything and everything spa where spa people meet, right? So it's spa professionals uh, as well as people who support the spa industry, as in suppliers, products. Uh, even people who design okay. spots, so, you know, okay. just this, this a very so broad a, place. No, no, you bring up a great, okay. So there's a few key things we need to keep in mind here. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to make a directory that includes all of that, re, those resources and data. Right. When we're approaching those companies, there's a few things that we have to think about. Number one is who or how many decision makers are there? Right. Right. So for, I don't know, there's companies that make like jacuzzi spas, right? Or whatever, yeah. like these, there's like corporate company or they're, they're pretty established companies and to get their attention, they might be more structured and they only have budgets for like booths at events and conferences. And they're not really thinking, or there really is no decision maker there, or it's going to be like a zoom meeting or you need to have a media kit. Um, you know, you need to do an in-person pitch to them to join your site and things like that. So 
who or how many decision makers uh, are there is an important question. And then mm -hmm. how long, um, how long is that process going to take? Mm -hmm. um, now, one way to fast track all that, and I'll just give you a shortcut. Let's say you go that route and you're going to go after all the major manufacturers of spa equipment and stuff like that. What you should do is uh, just yourself is add links for their competitors, for some competitors, um, and then show them the decorated profiles of their competitors. And you say, you know, Spa USA is here. You know, don't you want, you know, Jacuzzi USA to be here? Too? You guys should be here too. So add right. links for some competitors and leverage those uh, when you're pitching or when you're going. So Other my my thought process too was to not to take up too much time here, but my process too was the long list of some of the top shows that I have. Every every expo has exhibitors, right? Yep, and so cool. I'm wanting to give to give the highest membership that I have available to those shows because if I give them the highest one and they are on the website and I help them to populate their page then they're there and then all of their exhibitors and I can even tell them hey I'd like to also give you 10 memberships to give away to your exhibitors to some of your exhibitors or what have you and package it that way to let them know hey come on in use the product I'll give you a, a whole year membership and then something to give away to your exhibitors so, so that's my marketing plan I mean well not the whole plan but no no I, I love that so um you know you keep using like the name is spa event so it really is it starts i mean it's it is expos and conferences and events and then it can trickle out to like products and things like that what i would mm -hmm. my first like knee-jerk reaction is find the five you need you need categories right so if you're going to be spa events what i would ask ChatGPT like what the top top five categories would be you said a few you said massage I'm thinking uh, jacuzzi. Aesthetic skincare. skincare. There's no jacuzzi, yeah, because that uh, okay. that is a whole other industry. That's fine. I would pick yeah. five. I would pick five. Okay. And then what I would do is these shows and expos, they are brands of themselves, right? There's different right. shows and expos, but they are they should have a profile of their own. So I would create a profile of the shows and expos. I would just do five. I would do I would just I like round numbers. I would do five massage expos or events or conferences, five skincare and five other ones. Equipment or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Equipment, sure. Um, you know, make them, and then what you should do is, and then when you create their profile, go ahead and post their, their make a post of their upcoming event. Mm -hmm. So, and now, now have all these expos on there and then say, and put their competitor on there as a featured expo, right? Because you're going to have five different ones. Mm -hmm. And and start pinning them against each other, not in a negative way, but in a competitive way. And that, and you make, have a professional media kit ready. It can be a one pager. And you just tell them it's 250 bucks for a month to be featured at the top of our site. We can do that a month before your expo mm -hmm. begins. That's the mm -hmm. best way to, that's how, that's how most of our members have the most success. Um, we can give you a highlighted package. We can put you on our homepage. Really, they're paying for visibility, and this is an advertising move for them. Um, mm -hmm. No one's going to pick up the phone and call them. They want to sell tickets or they want to get booths sold. So the, there's like two markets there are the vendors and then the, the, the consumers or end user who would go there um, for, the, for the booths that are there. So that would be my suggestion is to start with the five, five and five. Find five categories create profiles for the five expos list, go ahead and manually list some of the upcoming events, um, make a one pager media kit. They should know what they're paying for or what to expect if they pay 250, 500, $1,000. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you can, we have webinars on what you can offer and stuff like that. Let me give you one that'll be helpful and we can, and we can move on. Cause yeah, I do see a, a few other hands up. Yeah. There. I didn't want but, to take up too much time. No, no, Thank it's, you, a, it's, a, it's a good and valid question. You know, these are, People want to do everything for everyone, and that's usually not the best route because mm -hmm. you know, you're a solopreneur. You're going to spread yourself thin, so it's yep. better to get strong in one focus, and then you can expand once you kind of grow a bit. Um, so I think it's the 15 plus upsells uh, members will pay for, 
And I would watch this webinar towards the end, and there's another one I'm gonna show you too. This is good for everyone to watch. These are just 15 additional things you can upsell to members. Even if you just have free member signups, these are other things that they can uh, upgrade to. And let me find the other one. It's highlight, I think. Let's see if I can find this one. No, I'm not gonna find it right. I think it's, uh, let me search for upsell one more time. That's that same one there. No worries, that, that first one has a lot of benefit in it. So thank you for the question though. This is a really good topic. Okay, thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm, I still need to know about the, you know, how to run the SEO for that, but I, I can uh, put so the, something the, in a you know chat or something. You know, SEO will happen over time. And as I mentioned before, your BD sites SEO is already like established, like it's already mm -hmm. set up. I would, you can kind of rewatch this if you need to enhance it further, but I would focus on uh, basically creating FOMO for these expos and whoever you're going to contact by okay. le le by kind of leveraging leveraging them against each other by decorating one profile or over another and and having that one pager that has the uh, what what they can purchase like a media kit almost. almost. Okay, sounds okay. great. All right. All right, thank you so much. Good luck. Join us in another we uh, webinar, Veronica. We'd love to see uh, your progress. All right, we do have some more hands up here. Let me see here. I got our good friend Brian B. How you doing, Brian? Pretty good, and you? Pretty good. Thanks for hanging in there with us here. No problem. Uh, I just had like a recommendation, uh, just sure. a quick one here. Um, so I noticed how you were talking about like the on the home page you have like the display and you wanted to put the star ratings and stuff underneath that. Um, but like on the profile or whatever, um, I don't see like anything that says member is online online right now which would also be kind of cool because if you can see a member is online and it could like link in with the private chat system and everything so like you'd be more apt to message somebody that's like online right now versus somebody that's not online if that makes sense true true um you could you could repurpose the verified um, I'm just thinking of existing variables that exist and I'll, and change it from verified to online now and I'll, and add that to their contact form and allow them to toggle that uh, and just update the existing text label uh, text labels around that. That's just the first knee jerk reaction I have on how you can kind of implement that with something that already exists. Um, second to that, you can kind of just re if you need to recreate that, uh, you could technically do that. Um, if if repurposing the verified badge doesn't uh, work for you yeah so i i was actually trying to like make it so like if the user was like logged into their account um that it would basically display an online message but uh the only thing i can see is like user id um cookie session but that's for the user that's actually currently logged in not for uh, the user that you want to see if they are logged in, if that makes sense. Right, right. You know, another thing which might be interesting and in like a lot of these like service um, service apps like Yelp or Thumbtack, they have like a response and, you know, average response time, 15 minutes. That would be an interesting stat that we might be able to create based on the private chat messages because those are like the one-on-one -on -one thing. So how long does it take them to respond to the initial chat message? Mm -hmm. um, and all that is is subtracting the time from the when the message is created till when the member first responds um, and then you can have like a threshold where it only an advanced setting where if it's less than 15 minutes show this badge and then put the number so you don't want to say like average response time four hours or unless you want to i see that though actually that's a good idea <laughs> it's uh it's a you know uh that's i'm just thinking the quickest way to get there uh for you average response time badge uh based on uh, initial uh private chat response because that's the only dynamic thing that's really going back and forth between uh like a consumer trying to reach out to a professional uh who's browsing your site yeah i i was toying around with like um the because i actually got it to where like i can make it say like the person last updated by just adding like uh, a PHP like what is right like, the current date 
and then I just put that in there with PHP and then hide it. But then if they've updated any of their profile pages, I have to put it on each page, you know? So then, but it, that's the closest I've gotten to like online now is like last updated kind of thing. Last update is also a good start to fill you. Um, the private chat would be good. Sometimes they're logged in and they just don't log out. They just close their computer or laptop and technically they're logged in on the internet, um, but mm -hmm. they not, might, might not be at the computer. Um, I can, I can kind of see that sometimes being problematic. Um, but there's ways around that. It's interesting. It hasn't come up too much, to be honest, but um, it would be a nice little stat um, that you're now that you're mentioning it. Cool. Thank you. So thank you for that. Yeah, good stuff, Brian. All right, let's take, we're running a little over time here, but the conversation's really good today. Let's go with Simon here. Uh, just got to unmute your microphone, Simon. All right, Simon, it looks like you're self-muted there. No worries. All right, let's see who else got their hand up here. Let's circle back to Rich here. Rich, why don't you take us home here? We did uh, we went over like 40 minutes, but again, good conversation. Uh, what was the last question you had for us there? Yeah, great stuff uh, again, Jason. Um, um, one thing, just a compliment overall. I've noticed with, uh, what's unique about Brilliant Directories as opposed to some other um, online services or websites, yada, yada, is that when you guys release the updates, there tends to be no glitches. Um, you know, I've been a customer for quite a few years, and it's unusual to have a website without, you know, it doesn't, the rollout of their uh, their roadmap always seems to have some glitches, and um, <clears throat> so, knock on wood, that's the way it's been, it's been happening. Well, I don't want to take, I don't want to take credit, but I'm going to give a shout out to Jeffrey Wyatt, uh, yeah. our chief uh, uh, operations. Um, sometimes things do happen, but, but we're quick to roll them back. Um, so they go unnoticed maybe, but, uh, yeah, we do have a pretty thorough, uh, QA quality assurance process before things get pushed out. So shout yeah, out I to mean, the it, development team. Big time, super impressive. Yeah. And, uh, very unusual, um, with all the moving parts. So quick question really on the SEO. Um, well, first on the SEO, that was a very great tip of the week and great, in, uh, in-depth information and so forth. Uh, one thing we've we've done is, you know, we use Google Alerts, um, and I, I'm sure you're familiar with that, but it wasn't part of the SEO presentation. But um, we get alerts on a pretty regular basis of, you know, based on what we submit to Google Alerts, showing us our traffic and organic, you know, uh, traffic and so forth. Um, but the actual question, the last question I had was on the SEO. Um, I, I did the changes in real time, which you were explaining under the SEO settings, but I'm getting kind of a partial update. I don't know if you go to like our homepage and try to click on the social media um, links. What's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the site? Just, uh, uh, podcasters, yeah, podcastersdirectory.com. That's right. And okay. I had it on like one of our features pages, but I added the uh, share this page on the homepage and I updated the SEO settings and it, it updated some of it, but it still carried over some of the older stuff too. Um, but I, I think I may know why. So we're on your home page here. Let yeah. me go to the edit static page, right? Okay. And let's see what you've what you've done yeah. here. So under SEO settings. So uh, you're saying this title is not getting picked up, or which part is not getting picked um, up? On? Well, if you like, you click on the page, you'll see what's. So that's what should be picked up. But then when you scroll down about halfway down, is the share social media right there? Click on Twitter, for example. It's easier one to think um, to illustrate, and maybe it's a cache or a cookie situation on my end. Um, yeah, I can show you. Well, yeah. Th so these sites cache shares. Um, mm -hmm. They'll update them over time. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see what happens when we do Facebook real quick. So you've entered. Let's just uh, backtrack here. So you've entered just one sentence here: the community for podcasters, speakers, and authors. Yeah, I so changed all that actually, all those boxes, but I wasn't sure where they would appear. Okay. It's saying uh, member directory, find members, podcasters oh, yeah. directory. So what we yeah. want to do is this. It's, I want to share you a link. Uh, Facebook, okay. uh, they, they used to call it delinter. They called it something else. Now it's called a debugger. So okay. what we want to do is take your URL. And you should do this on all your uh, super important changes. Again, they, yeah. they have their own mechanisms, but I'm just curious what this is going to do. It's going to reset their, their cache and rescrape your site. So... Um, yeah, because LinkedIn is real bad about that. Like I did 
something unrelated right. uh, was sent Fox today on LinkedIn. Um, so this this was last scraped in 2021. Interesting why they would do that, but it's I don't know why. Let's rescrape it now. Two seconds ago. So now it's it's the correct one. Um, let's see here for the based on the raw tags podcaster directory. Let's look at your source code as well. And what we want to look for is we'll search for OG image here. It should be taking uh, this here the title the community for podcasters speakers and authors this is the og title description and the image head let's see what uh, what it took here it is a caching it got the right image um but it's not it's chosen to take your see the og title here your og title is right here the community of podcaster speakers facebook has been buggy recently with their images that's a known thing um let's see if it took the description description search the most it looks like it's taking you see i updated all that now that was what yeah. used to appear a few minutes ago but i did it live during the webinar um, and i replaced i'm not sure if i put it in all the right boxes for as far as the seo yeah. settings right but here used... let me reset this real quick yeah let's just check one more thing here select your seo settings it should be pulling from here your og description is right here there it is. We believe to be heard. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's uh, get rid of the home up here and scrape this. URL returned a bad HTTP response. Oh, I have. Let's see why that's happening too. Should be all good. Let's see. Let's try one more time for you here. I mean, those share links that I put on there, I'm not sure where those originated from because um, it looks a little wonky the way it spreads out. Like, uh, yeah, these, so these are, link. yeah, these are side, this is main for the sidebar. Since X updated, they don't fill the width. This is coming oh, okay. from Twitter. Yeah. It's an iframe. So yeah, they don't click, on the Twitter, click on the Twitter one because it kind of updated partially on Twitter. Um, see, no, no, now it went back to the original. Yeah. See that? Yeah. But when I clicked on it, it um... let's see, let's see what they have for that. Can you put that link in the uh, chat too? Because then I can use this, you know, moving forward. These debuggers, yeah. I, I, I didn't know that was a scenario there. Absolutely. Let me uh, let me get rid of the uh, link here. You just have to be logged into Facebook to get prompt with this. So oh. just know that. Um, Okay, let me share that link there. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm gonna take a look at that after the webinar and see why that might be happening because everything is uh, is is coded uh, coded properly, but uh, maybe we're missing something here. Yeah, this should this is not this is not correct. There's member directory is nowhere on in your look. If I search for member directory in your source code, just a moment. Let's come here and search for that actual explicit text member directory it's here browse member directory but it's not in it that's the only member directory on on this page so it's very strange that it's choosing this here um yeah, that was so what take it a used look. To. Okay. that's right and i'm gonna take a look at this actually in a little i don't have an answer for you right now but uh, i want to see why okay. it's saying this bad response code something related maybe to Try your demo site. See if maybe um, oh, you side know by what? side you, to see if it, and, and notice like in my settings, did I do something incorrect there? Let me um, check your robots real quick. Just a second. That's what they we we're pushing an update to add this to all sites next week. Okay. Let me restore your default real quick. What they've wanted is this new one here. This Facebook external hit. That's what's being added. Okay. So that's because of this. Their little glitch that they had. They're forcing all sites to add this to their robots. So we're adding this to all BD robots that don't have okay. that are using our default code. Let's try this now because now I'm actually curious. Try make um, the robots happy. Yeah. Yeah. The the robots are the crawlers. <laughs> so scrape again. Nope. Still doesn't like that. I'm gonna check this one out for you, Rich. I don't have an answer just yet for you. No worries. I mean, do you, do you want to do like compare your um, updates on your uh, demo site? See I, if would, I would. 
Well, updated. I don't want to take up any more on the yeah. webinar time here, but I would create a support ticket. I would also ask in the Facebook group, and I'm pretty curious about this one. I am going to compare it after the webinar here to see what okay. could be uh, causing this uh, warning here, because everything to our eyes looks uh, looks correct here. Um, but thank you for bringing that up, Rich. Yeah, absolutely. All right, good stuff there, our good friend Rich there. Guys, we went way past the time here, but it was a super informative webinar. Thank you so much. The next webinar is in two weeks. A big shout out to David Rockland putting together these slides. Slides, super valuable tip of the week, where to make edits to optimize your BD website's SEO. Lots of good lab updates coming down the pipeline. I'm anticipating the next two months are gonna be very exciting in BD land. Uh, we will post the replay of this webinar shortly after in the Facebook group. If you're not a member, join us, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. And again, subscribe to the BD YouTube channel, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash YouTube. I have to be, I'm so humbled and grateful. There were amazing questions today and it was tons of fun. Truly a great honor to be with you guys here today. On behalf of myself, David, and the entire Brilliant Directories family, Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and a brilliant week. The next webinar is in two weeks. We'll see you there. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.